And uh, if you have your King James Bible, you can turn your Bibles now. In the book of Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. In verse number 12 to 14. But uh, I'm going uh, back to uh, the book of Matthew chapter 7 later on. Hebrews chapter 5. If you're there, say a lot. Amen. amen. Verse number 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of the use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Alright? Let's go back to the book of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Beginning from verse number 13. Alright, you got it? All right, are you there? Amen. Amen. All right. Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in the rut. All right. Number 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Or few will find it. Alright? Few will, will love to find it. Okay? Now I want you to, to, to I, I want to I talk to you tonight on the subject, a spiritual bottleneck. A spiritual bottleneck. Alright? Let's bow our heads for prayer, please. Father, thank you for these passages. I pray to please use me tonight. Don't make me, but don't just help me, but make me and use me and and uh, make me a blessing to your people, an encouragement and a help to your people. Thank you for our first time visitors tonight. And I pray for to please uh, uh, save the unsaved and baptize the converts tonight. And uh, also please examine our hearts tonight. If there's any wicked ways in our hearts, please forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And uh, please also uh, uh, convict those people who are uh, uh, in, their, in the midst of their problems, O oh God, and troubles, to continue to trust in your word, O oh God. And we can only find hope in your word, not in any, anyone here on earth, not in anything here on earth, but in your word. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. All right. Thank you. You may be seated. Is everybody ready now? Yes. Amen. Uh, I was thinking of, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a preacher tonight. And because uh, uh, honestly, since uh, Thursday, I wasn't feeling well. Oh, but uh, I said, uh, God, please give me a little strength. Give me, give me the power that I'm going to, I, I, I always love to preach, brethren. Especially in this church. This is the best church for me. And uh, uh, I believe God gave me the power. God gave me the strength. So I'll try to preach to you uh, and to help you uh, tonight. All right. Now in the book of Hebrews chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 5. Let's turn our, our Bibles too. Let's turn back uh, to it. And then uh, Sabidim Biblia in verse number 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Which be the first oracles of the, uh, or uh, uh, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Now, 
the Lord was speaking about growth in this passages, in these two pa passages here, or three verses here that we have just read a while ago in the book of Hebrews chapter 5. Ito'y tumutukoy sa growth ng bawat Kristiyano. I want you to understand carefully what I'm, what I'm telling you here. Sapagkat uh, I don't want you to miss anything. I want you to understand. Uh, I'm trying to preach as, uh, as God gave me the power and the strength. Okay? So pahinggan nyo mabuti. At uh, ayoko magsayang ng oras so dito baka mamaya hindi ko matapos yung mensahe. Alright? Amen. Alright? Now, so God wants us to grow. God, God's desire for every child of God is to grow. You see, now God hates people, I mean Christians, who are not growing. You see? Now listen, God has His own way and has His own plan for His own people to grow. Listen, we, you, you cannot make your own plan to grow. You've got to go to God's plan and God's word for us to grow. That's why the Bible says we are to desire the sincere milk. We are to desire the pure word of God in order for us to grow. We cannot grow in our spiritual life apart from the word of God. Hindi tayo pwede lumago. Lalago lamang tayo sa pamagitan ng salita ng Diyos. Wala na pong iba. At huwag kang lalago. Do not desire to grow apart from the Word of God. Yes, you might, you might, you might, uh, like what I've said a while ago, you might read some books uh, that are good, you know, they have, they have good philosophy, they have good principles, but listen, there is no substitute in the Word of God. There is no substitute in the pure Word of God. You see, God wants us to read the Bible. God wants us to grow in His Word. Again, God wants us to grow and God wants us to live the Christian life. You see, living the Christian life uh, is not as easy as living the world. You see, now because people want to live by themselves. But listen, if you're going to live by, if you're going to live uh, your Christian life, you ought to abide and obey the Word of God. You see, hindi, ang, 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 pag namuhay ka sa sanglibutan, alright, you, you just live by yourself. Well, you had nothing to worry. Para sasabihin na, oh well, uh, ito susundin ko. No, no, walang ganun. Sanglibutan. You see, kung ano nakikita mo, maganda sa paningin mo, alright, you get it. Pero sa salita ng Diyos, there are times that you do not like what the Bible says, but listen, you've got to abide and you've got to obey it because th this is exactly what God wants you to do. You see, may mga mahihirap mga kapatid. You see, pero nais kong sabihin sa inyo, bagamat mahirap, bagamat hindi nyo gusto, hindi natin gusto, kinakailangan natin ipamuhay sapagat yun ang gusto sa atin ng Panginoon. Again, God wants us to live the Christian life. And God is expecting us God is expecting us to grow and God, like what I've said, has His own way for us to grow. Now, a bottleneck is analogous to the halted growth. To the halted growth of a Christian life. You see, there's an illustration dito, mga patid. Ano nakikita nyo? A glass of water. Alright? Another one is a bottle of water, alright? Tanggalan po natin ng takip. Ito po nakikita nyo rito, itong side na ito, ito po yung tinatawag na bottle neck. Okay? Now, kahit na ma-mispronounce yun, gawin nyo mga bottle neck, same thing, ang issue. Because the bottle neck will give you a bottle. Okay? Ito po yan. Now, ano ang pagkakaiba? Ang pagkakaiba po nito, the difference is this. Alright? Tingnan niyo mabuti. Pagka tinuwad ko ito at tinapong ko yung tubig, easy. You see? Sapagkat walang neck. Wa walang liig. Alright? Yung, yung battle neck can be a battle neck. You understand? Alright, nakita yung pagkakaiba kanina. Alright? Look. Matagal yung paglabas ng tubig. Why? Because of the neck of the bottle. You understand? Eto, madali ang paglabas ng tubig. Bakit? 
walang neck. Alright? Now, again, God wants us to grow. Don't forget that. Nandudun yung theme natin. Nandudun yung, nandudun yung objective ko, mga kapatid. Alright? Now, God wants us to grow and God wants us to live the Christian life. Now, in order for us to live the Christian life, then we need to grow. And as you grow, you ought to live the Christian life. You cannot say, man, I hate growing. Now, if you hate growing, you're simply saying, well, I hate, I hate the Christian life. You cannot hate your Christian life. If you're a Christian, if you're saved tonight, you cannot hate. You cannot say, man, I hate this. I hate to do this. I hate to obey the Word of God. I hate to read, read the Bible. I hate soul winning. No. Listen, if it is Christian, if it is God's ministry, if it is God's activities, you cannot hate it because it is exactly what God wants you to do. It is exactly what God wants you to be. See? Now, listen. But, you will notice here, that every Christian will arrive into a junction of his life. You see, what I'm simply saying is this, alright? Now I hope lahat naman tayo nakakadaan dito. You see that junction right there? One is going to the right, one is going to the left, you is under the derecho, and one is coming from, he, uh, coming from here. Okay? So, merong junction po dyan na tinatawag. And most of the time, mga kapatid, most of the time, that Junction right there always became the bottleneck. Diba? Eto, nagiging bottleneck. Nahihirapan lumabas yung tubig. Nahihirapan lumabas minsan yung mga tao. Now, makikita nyo minsan dito mga batid. From here, you can see a lot of people. Many. I mean, numbers of people. Hundreds of people are coming from here. Mabilis. Lumabas dito. Bakit? Walang bottleneck dito eh. Pero pagdating doon, nakapila na kayo. Hindi mo na masusunod yung gusto mo doon. Dito okay lang paglabas mo, pagtayo mo. Pagtayo mo ng ganun, of one. Alright. Alright. You're dismissed. Bang, bang. Labas ka dyan. That's fine. Pero maya maya pagdating mo doon, natitigil ka ng ganun. Lalong lalo na yung mga may sakyan. And then, ang sasabihin ng mga driver ng mga sakyan, may ari ng sakyan. Mga security yan. You're showing your bad attitudes. Are you still with me? Alright, don't, don't, don't miss this. Don't miss this. Now, I'm talking about spiritual bottleneck. Now, listen to me. Every Christian will arrive to their own junction. Okay? You will arrive you will arrive into a junction of your life where the bottleneck is the only passage to grow. Lahat dadaan po rito. Again, don't miss what I've said. God has His own way for us to grow. Alright? Alright? Hindi ka pwede magreklamo sa pagkat Kristiano ka. Hindi ka pwede magreklamo kung saan. I mean, God wants you to live your Christian life, and God wants you to grow. As you grow, you've got to live the Christian life. And as you live the Christian life, you will grow. Huh? Hindi mo pwedeng iwasan. Now, here is the problem, brethren. All right, are you still following me? I thank God for the Christians who are excited. I thank God for the Christians who are eager, zealous, enthusiastic, diehard, energetic, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And this is what we call a growing Christian life. But eventually, a growing, and that growing Christian life will reach its own bottleneck. As you grow in Christ. And some may choose to proceed the way. Kung saan sila nandoon, pwede kang magpatuloy lamang. Oh, dito na lamang tayo. But some may divert and proceed to another way. Which, which they thought it's easy for them to use another way. Alright? Let's go back to the Bible, brethren. Let's go back to the book of Matthew. 
Alright? Now in the book of Hebrews, we have God encouraging us or telling us to grow. Alright? Did you, did you get that? Now, in the book of Matthew, here is God, the Lord Jesus Christ, was speaking to, or was giving to His Sermon on the Mount. And then in verse number 13, He said, He encouraged His disciples to enter in at the straight gate. Why is that? Because wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to what? Destruction. We might put it this way, in this way, alright? There's so many ways to destruction. I mean, the way to, to, to destruction is easy. Mas madali ang daan patungo sa kapahamakan. At mas marami kang pagpipilian pagdating sa daan patungo sa kapahamakan. Are you with me? Marami kang daan. Marami kang pagpipilian. You see? Madali kang mag-divert. But listen to me. That is not what God wants you to be. That is not where God wants, that is not where God wants you to be. God has His own way and has His own plan for us to grow. Alright? Now, so verse number, verse number 14, He said, no, in verse number 13, so, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in the rod. Marami ang pipili doon, mga kapatid. Ang sabi ng Biblia, ang sabi ng Panginoon sa Wisto, marami ang pipili sa daan na yun. Bakit? Madali eh. Madali. But, ang sabi niya, because straight is the way. By the way, the word straight means difficult. It means narrow. It means confined. It means uncomfortable. It means uh, uh, distressful. It means inconvenient. But again, it is possible. It is possible. Alright? He said, verse number 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. Now, two things that lead it to life. What are those? Narrow gate, uh, straight gate and narrow way. Now, listen. Uh, tingnan po natin mabuti, mga patid. Uh, ayoko mamimiss niyo po itong dalawang ito. Alright? Dalawa ko yung daan patungo sa buhay. Ano yung una? Ano yung una dapat daanan? Straight gate. Ibig sabihin, mahirap. Ibig sabihin, maliit lamang. Ibig sabihin, confine, okay? Pag sinabing confine, nakikita niyo po dyan mga kapatid sa, sa highway, sometimes you can see there are three lanes. Alright? And then after a mile, after two kilometers maybe, after two kilometers, the three lanes will become one lane. Okay? The three lanes will be confined into one lane. Just imagine... Yung mga cars, mga kapatid, na nandun doon, na mga, mga sakyan na nandun doon sa three lanes. Yung mga sakyan na nandun sa three lanes, eh sa three lanes pa nga lang, grabe na ang traffic. And all of a sudden, the three lanes will be confined into one lane. Do you imagine? What kind of road is that? What, what, what will happen to the, to the traffic? Are you still with me? You see? Now listen to me. That's why many people will make a decision to go or not to go. To proceed or not to proceed. You see, they might change their mind. And not to proceed, even they knew that this is the way. The reason why they were there, because they knew that this is the way. This is the right way. And this is the only way. But because of the bottleneck, because of the bottleneck, they changed their mind not to proceed and to choose another lane. Are you still with me? Alright. Now, so Jesus said, He said in verse number 14, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto light, then few there be that find it. It means, few, just very few, will make a decision that they will choose that way. The inconvenient, confined, 
distressful way. Kung kunti lamang mo ang pipili na sasabihin nila, dito ako dadaan. Pipiliin nila yung malawak kasi, man, dinadiretso. Ah, ang luag ng kalsadang ito. Man, walang trabaho. Hindi tayo titigil dito. Pero ang tanong ko, saan, da, saan kayo dadalhin ng malawak na dana yan? See that? Now, uh, ang sabi ng Biblia, sabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo, piliin ninyo yung makitid. Piliin ninyo yung makitid, distressful, uncomfortable. Bakit? Bihira lamang, kukunti lamang ang pipili sa dana yan, sa gate na yan. Sapagat yung iba dyan, pipiliin nila yung malalaki. But, sabi ng Biblia, don't forget this, wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that lead it to where? Come on now. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead it to destruction. While straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead it unto life. You see, brethren, this is the Bible. This is the Bible. Now, I'm saying... Sinasabi ko po sa inyo kanina mga patid, that I really praise the Lord for the Christians who are growing. Praise God for the excited Christian. Praise the Lord for the excited choir members. Praise the Lord for the eager and zealous uh, ushers and enthusiastic, diehard, energetic preachers and, and, and uh, uh, Sunday school teachers. Praise the Lord for the unmovable Christians always abounding in the work of the Lord. And thank God that you're growing. But like what you said, someday, eventually, as you grow, you will reach your own bottleneck in your Christian life. As you grow in Christ, you may choose to proceed and you may choose to find another way. Now, let me show you something here. In fact, I can put a lot of list here ng mga uh, uh, different bottlenecks of Christian life or in, in, in our Christian life. Marami po tayo mga bottlenecks no, sa buhay natin Christian. Pero pumili lamang po ako dito ng, ka, ng ilan para makita po natin kung ano yung na, sabi ko sa inyo kanina. Ito yung nagiging adlang sa ating paglago. A lot of Christians are are stagnant in their Christian life because of bottleneck. Because of this. Katulad ng pagbuhos ko rito ng tubig, mga kapatid, hindi ka agad makalabas. They have the desire to grow. They have the desire to grow. They have the desire to obey the Word of God. But the problem is, kapag ka dumating na po sila sa junction at nakita nila yung bottleneck, pipiliin na lang not to proceed rather than to proceed. Again, this is this passage, brethren. This way is uncomfortable, inconvenient. Maaring hindi maganda sa inyong paningin. Maaring nababagot kayo. But listen, this is still possible. Pwede pa rin hong dumaan. Pwede pa rin dumaan. Now, what are the bottlenecks that we have in our Christian life? Now, magbibigay lang ako sa inyo ng mga ideas, mga kapatid, but there are so many bottlenecks that I may not mention in your life because every Christian has his own bottleneck. My bottleneck may be different from Brother Rollins. His bottleneck might, might be different from Brother Albert's. But you can, Brother Albert, kakaiba rin sa mga bottleneck ninyo, mga kapatid. But let me show this. Generally, mga kapatid, ito ho ang nakikita ko kung bakit marami mga Kristiyano na hindi makausad-usad. One is the unforgiving spirit. Unforgiving spirit. Now think about this. One of the bottlenecks in our Christian life that people may choose not to proceed to their growth, huh? Sasabi nila, well, siguro dito na lang ako. Tama na sa akin to. You see, they might and they will choose not to grow because of their unforgiving spirit. Let me tell you something. In the book of 1 John, the book of 1 John chapter 
chapter 1, a very familiar passage here. 1 John chapter 1 in verse number 9. Ano sabi ng Biblia? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who is willing to forgive us if we confess our sin? Huh? God. Who is willing to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we confess our sin? Now, can you notice mga kapatid, na dito sa talata na ito, merong sin, if we confess, God is faithful to forgive us. And listen, every sin, meron kasama pong uncleanness, unrighteousness. You see? So if you have sin in your life, there's always unrighteousness in your life. But do you understand that God is willing to forgive us if we confess and at the same time, God is also willing us to cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Do you understand why? Because if you have an unforgiving spirit, you might think of another sin that para lamang makaganti ka sa iyong, sa iyong, sa iyong kaaway, sa iyong kagalit. Naunawa niyo po ba yan? If you have, a, kung meron po ako unforgiving spirit kay Brother Roland, hindi lamang sa hindi ko siya pinapatawad, pero ang iniisip ko pa is, paano ako makakaganti sa ginawa niya? And that is, brethren, unrighteousness. Listen, who created us? God. Who has the authority over our life? God. Therefore, when we sin, brother, we're sinning against God. You see? We sin against God. But listen, when, when we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us. And God is faithful also to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now listen to me. If God can forgive us and to cleanse, willing to cleanse us, if we confess, are we better than God? Huh? Mas, 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 so sobra po ba tayo sa Diyos na hindi tayo makapagpatawad? At alam niyo pa mga patid na kaya maraming hindi lumalago dahil lang sa itong klaseng puso na hindi makapagpatawad. Ito yung bottleneck mo sa iyong buhay. Ito yung, ito yung hindi ka makabuho siya. Kaya hindi ka makausad-usad. Kaya hindi makalabas-labas yung tubig kasi because of the bottleneck, because of the neck. Nasasakal ka, natsutsok ka. When it comes to forgiveness, uh, 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 I can't do that. Uh, uh, eh, eh. Hindi mo lang alam, pastor, kung ano ginawa sa akin ng lukong dong yan. Hindi mo lang alam, pastor. I don't care. Pero alam ko, mayroong isang nakakaalam. Diyos ang nakakaalam. At yung kasalanan mo sa Diyos ay hindi pa hihigit sa kasalanan ng taong yan laban sa'yo. Don't miss this. To forgive is to set a prisoner free. Ulitin ko. Ang ganda, no? This is nice, bro. To forgive is to set a prisoner free. But don't you ever forget and you must realize that the prisoner is you. You're the prisoner. You've got to forgive somebody because you're in the cell, brethren. You're locked in that kind of spirit. Remember, you are right here. Nandi dito ka sa loob na ito, mga patid. Papalabas ka pa lang. Ay, itong bottleneck na ito, itong neck na ito, this is your unforgiving spirit. Sino ang nasa labas, kapatid? You ang hindi mo pinapatawad o ikaw na hindi napapatawad? You're, you, you've got to set yourself. Listen, the key is in your hand. The key for you to be free is in your hand. Nobody's holding the key but you. You've got to realize that you are the prisoner. Hindi ho yung, hindi yung hindi mo pinapatawad, ikaw yung, ikaw yung naka, nakakulong. Tignan nyo, kaya hindi ka makausad. Amen. Amen. E nagtataka lamang ho ako eh, kung bakit pa tayo humihigit pa yung spirit natin sa spirito ng Diyos. Yung Diyos kaya tayo mapatawad. Tapos hindi natin mapatawad yung ibang tao. 
Again, gaano kalaki ang i ang kanyang kasalanan sa iyo kumpara sa kasalanan mo kay Kristo? May nakikinig po ba sa akin? Gaano kalaki ang kasalanan ng tao sa iyo, ng kapwa mo, kumpara sa kasalanan mo sa Diyos, na hindi mo kayang patawarin? Siguro, pastor, hanggang sa kamatayan ko na, sinusumpa ko yung taong yan. God's mind is very simple. If we confess, God is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your unforgiving spirit will bear another fruit, and that is unrighteousness. But God is willing to cleanse your unrighteousness. Totoo yan. Totoo yan. Tinan niyo mga patid. If somebody sinned against me, and I will not forgive him, do you understand what I might do and what I can do to put him down? Because I'm not forgiving him. Anong gagawin ko? I'll go to another person and tell his fault, his sin to him. What's that? Ganun na. Chismisa na. That is unrighteousness, brethren. That is unrighteousness. Grabe na ang ginagawa mo. Simple yung kasalanan ang ginawa nito, pero pinagsabi-sabi mo na. And that is your what? Bottleneck. God wants us to live the Christian life. And to live the Christian life is to grow. And as we grow, we're living the Christian life. And as we live the Christian life, we are growing. If you will not live the Christian life, you cannot grow. I said, you cannot say, hey, I hate to forgive others. Man, you have no idea what kind of sin he committed against me. Ah, you have no idea. Ah, don't talk to me about it. But listen to me. You're no God. You're no more than God. If God is willing to forgive and to cleanse, who art thou, man, who art thou man that God is mindful of you? Huh? Sino ba tayo? Para isipin ng Diyos at tingnan tayo. No, hindi ho tayo ganun, mga kapatid. Pag-aabalahan tayo ng Diyos. Sana may hiya naman tayo sa sarili natin. Ano? But again, the objective of this message is for us to grow. But how can we grow kung hindi ho tayo mga kalampas dito sa neck nito? Again, pag dumating tayo doon sa sarili nating junction, dumating tayo doon sa ating bottleneck, will you proceed or choose or think to go another way? Which way? Which way? The command here, brethren, is use the straight gate and not the wide gate. Use the narrow way and not the broad way. Not only that. Not only this kind of uh, 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 um, bottleneck that we have in our Christian life. Again, like what I said, marami ho tayo, may kanya-kanya ho tayo. Pangalawa, how about pride? How about pride? Let's go to the book of, let's go to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13. Another uh, familiar passage here, chapter 13 of the book of Proverbs, in verse number 10. Notice what the Bible says here. Only by what? <laughs> it is emphasized in this passage, brethren, that only by pride cometh contention. Contentions do not come from any other things. Contentions only comes from what? 
pride. Wala nang ibang pinanggagalingan. This is the Bible, brethren. And what is contention? A conflict. A conflict. See? Na wala na ang ibang pinaggagalingan ang kaguluhan maliban sa pride. May kaguluhan pa sa bahay nyo? Pag merong nag exist if there is a conflict that is existing in your home, in your family, now think about pride. If there is, there is a conflict, contentions that is existing in your friendship, in any relationship, hey, let me tell you something tonight. There is always pride in it. You always consider pride. Because the Bible says, only by pride. Only by pride. The Bible is very clear. So what is this, brethren? This is one of our bottlenecks. Ito yan. See, listen to me. Don't expect that God will widen this one. Don't, don't, don't. Hey, everyone look at this way, please. Do not expect that God is going to stretch this gate right here. Because God wants us to choose the what? Straight gate. Not the wide. God wants us to choose and enter and use the narrow way and not the broad way. Am I preaching the Bible? I hope so. Pero ang expect natin mga pader, yes, I'm, 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 I'll obey God. Susundin ko ang Panginoon. Pero, Panginoon, pwede ba? Lakihan mo naman. E sabi nga ng Panginoon eh, maliit lang, piliin mo yung maliit kasi kung konti ang pipili niyan. Naunawaan mo ba na napakapalad mo kung pipiliin mo yung maliit? Gising, gising, gising. Wake up! Don't miss this message tonight because I believe this is your problem. I believe that a lot of people are, a lot of Christians tonight, sitting in this auditorium, you're satisfied to your condition right now. But God wants you to grow. God wants you to live your Christian life. And you cannot live the Christian life if you are not growing. Kailanman hindi ka lalago. Kailanman hindi ka, hindi mo may papamuhay. Yeah, do you understand that you will not grow as a Christian? The kind of life that you are living, do you understand what kind of life you're, you're, you're living if, you're not, if you will not choose to grow? Huh? Kapatid, sa totoo lang, pag hindi natin pinili na lumago, ha? for example, pag hindi ko pinili, mga kapatid, natanggalin ang aking pride, anong klaseng buhay meron ako? A life that is full of pride. And what is a life that is full of pride? Worldly. Devilish. And that's not Christian life. See that? That's why God wants us to live the Christian life. No wonder kung bakit marami mga Kristiyano ang mga reasoning, reasoning natin ay puro pa rin pang labas, puro pa rin pang unbelievers. Nandiyan pa yung murahan pagka hindi pa, pagka nagalit at hindi pa tumasatisfy, mumurahin na lang kasi akala niya ang pampatigil sa away ay mura. Magagalit na lamang, Riyam mo! Hmm. Pag narinig mo na yung mga ganun, titigil ka lang. Galit na yan, galit na, nagmumura na. Ganun ba ang pampatigil? Ano ang sinasabing pampatigil ho sa Biblia? Humility. Malumanay na pananalita. Ang to, nagtatanggal ng baga sa ulo. That's the Bible. Pride. Proverbs chapter 26. Do you understand that you can all that you can that all conflict is traceable? You can trace all the conflict. Proverbs twenty six, please. Proverbs twenty six. Look at verse number two. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Curse is judgment. The Bible says judgment is not gonna come without a cause. 
Conflict is not gonna come without a cause. Curse is not without a cause. Conflict is not without a cause. Conflict arises because we do not want anyone to telling us what is right or what is wrong. Kaya merong conflict. Ayaw natin na merong magsasabing, you're wrong! You're right! Ayaw natin, ayaw natin magsasabi ng ganun. You know what? That is pride. We don't want anybody telling us what to do or pakialaman yung buhay natin. Ayaw natin ng ganun. But brother, that's not a Christian life. That is pride. That is pride. You know, napakarami mga tao nagiging bitter because because of pride. Because of pride. You know, maraming mga Kristiyano mga kapatid, let me tell you something. Maraming mga Kristiyano naging bitter. Umalis sa church na ito because they don't want to forgive people. And uh, they have pride. Ah, wala siyang pakialam kung wala siya ng simbahan. Pero nauunawaan niyo ba mga kapatid, pagka nawalan kayo ng simbahan, yung mga maliliit yung anak, 10 years from now or 15 years from now, lalaki yan na walang simbahan. At wala man lamang nagturo sa kanila kung paano masosolve ang problema. Hindi nila nakita na si tatay o si nanay ay etong problemang ito, nabigyan din sila ng solusyon. No! The only solution that they have seen from you is to what? Run away from trouble. Leave the problem. And just imagine kung anong klaseng tao meron balang araw, anong klaseng generation meron tayo for the next generation who've never seen any solution to the problems. What did you put into, to, into their minds? Unsolved problems. Para lamang nilagay, sinabi natin sa kanila, itong problemang ito, wala nang solusyon to. Lagi na lamang ganito. In fact, karamihan sa ating gobyerno, ganyan ang paniwala, wala nang solusyon yung corruption na yun. Wala nang, may solusyon pa, kapatid. Let's preach the Bible. Let's preach the Word of God. Now, the education of this world cannot solve the problem, but I believe the Word of God can solve the problem. If you lift up the name of God, if you lift up the Word of God, if we preach the Word of God and continue living the Christian life, there is a solution to the problem. That's the only way. Alam nyo, pagka lumaki niyo mga bata, iniwan nila magandang simbahan, na like preach against sa kasalanan, lumaki niyo mga bata na walang nakitang paraan kung paano masolve yung kanilang problema. And before you know it, mas worse pa, sabi ko nga sa inyo, our sin will always bring our kids into the next level. I mean, higher level. Not to the lower. And just imagine na meron tayo mga, mga anak na hindi pumupunta sa simbahan, na hindi nakakaunawa ng salita ng Diyos, at stagnant sa kanilang maturity, no wonder kung bakit may mga bata ngayon, mga kapatid, na matatanda na, 25 years old, ang ugali, parang, parang lima, 5 years old noong araw. Oh yeah! 25 years old. Ayaw mo lang akong bigyan ng pangalog. Hindi na nga ako papasok sa school. 25 years old yan. 25 years old, mga kapatid, nagmamaktol at hindi mahabol yung ginagawa ng kanyang magulang. Na 48 anyos or 50 anyos. 50 years old cannot catch up to the 50 years, uh, to, 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 uh, I mean, 25, uh, 25 years old cannot catch up to the 50 years old. That's a shame. Nakakaya na ho generation na ito ngayon. Gising na yung 50 anyos, natutulog pa yung 25 anyos. Makinig kayong mabuti sa akin kayong mga teenagers. Makinig kayong mabuti. 
nakakahiya kayo pagka linggo ang nauuna pang mga pagbihis yung magulang nyo kay sa inyo. Tapos hihintay-hintayin kayo ng magulang ninyo. Bilisan mo na! Ano ba bang ginagawa? Pero pagka mag-text, pagdating sa computer, ang bibilis ninyo. Yan ako yung age ngayon, mga kapatid. Ha? Huh? But, as sinasabi ko po, mga kapatid, it is because of the parents who is full of pride na mas pinili niya na dumaan sa Broadway and, and, and wide gate rather than the, the, the uh, uh, straight gate in narrow way. You see, pride is one of our bottleneck. One of our bottlenecks. Now think about that. Have you ever considered that? Meron pa tayong unsolved problem sa buhay natin? Tingnan nyo, ang sabi ng Biblia, maliwanag eh. Contention do not come without a cause. Contention or conflict in the home, in the family, in our any relationship. There is always a cause. Lagi may dahilan. Hindi po pwedeng babangon na lamang yan dyan o walang dahilan, mga kapatid. But don't, don't miss this. Bitterness always hurts the one who is bitter instead of the object of the bitterness. Ang laging nasasaktan, mga kapatid, ay yung may bitterness at hindi naman talaga yung objective ng bitterness. Yan ang totoo po niya. Not only that. Not only that. I mean, consider this too. Marami pa, mga kapatid. Marami pa akong pwedeng ilista. Magdamag tayo rito, mga kapatid. Hindi ako mauubusan ng lista. Pero sinasabi ko lamang sa inyo, how about the third one? Money. 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 Datung, atik, pera, anda. Bakit pagka pinag-usapan ang pera, marami na didisgrasya? Uy, siya ano pala may natanggap? Ay, oo nga, alam mo, wala, wala mo lang sinasabi yan. Alam mo, asawa ko, hanggang ngayon, hindi ko alam kung anong sweldo. Sounds familiar? Pera. Now, do you understand, brethren, that money is the single biggest cause of family splits? It is the single biggest cause of family or family splits. Maraming nagkakahiwa-hiwalay ng mag-asawa, nagkakahiwa-hiwalay ng mga pamilya, magkakapatid laban sa kapatid, ha? magulang laban sa anak, anak laban sa magulang, magulang isang uh, uh, anak laban sa biyanan, biyanan laging, laging laban sa biyanan because of money. Money. For the love of money is the root of all what? Evil. Money. How about that? Maraming hindi makausad-usad sa kanyang kristyanong buhay because of money. Hindi ba kumunta sa church? Bakit? Wala akong pere. Hindi ba kumunta sa church? Bakit? Wala akong pang-offering. Napahiya ako. Hindi ba kumunta sa church? Bakit? Wala akong bagong sapatos. Wala akong pere. Hindi ko makapag-involve. Bakit? Wala akong pere. Alam mo, sa kasalita niyong ganyan, parang sa tingin ko tuloy, mukhang pera yung simbahan. Pero ang totoo niyan, hindi yung simbahan na mukhang pera eh. Ikaw yung mukhang pera. Wala nang ibang pinag-usapan, kundi pera, 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 pera. Hindi makausan, walang pera. Alam niyo sa totoo lang, mga kapatid, may mga taong hindi makapunta sa church na hindi bihis kasi walang pera. Kaya pag wala siyang pera, hindi siya makapunta sa church. Alam niyo kung bakit? Gusto niyo malaman? Ayaw niyo? Gusto niyo malaman? 
Kasi mahilig sa forma. Pag pumunta sa church, na kailang may mapansin sa kanya ang mga kristyano. Uy, ang ganda mo. Uy, bago yan. Uy, bago. Uy, ba, ba. Money, money, money. Alam niyo kung bakit? Ayaw niyang mawala ang yabang sa buhay niya. Bottlenecks. Isa lang mo yan sa mga bottlenecks, mga kapatid. Napakarami pa. How about in Christian service? Maraming ayaw mag-join sa choir, ayaw magkaroon ng ministry, sapagkat ang pinakang basis, foundation ng ministry is soul winning. Man, they can join the choir, they can sing in the choir, they can teach in Sunday school, they can, they can be an usher, they can, be, they can join the security group, they can join the, another security here, the music, uh, and other security, or other ministry, but, when it comes to soul winning, forget it. Ano yung bottleneck mo pagdating sa servisyo? Bakit hindi makausad? Bakit hindi makadiretso, mga kapatid? Ilan sa mga kristyano ngayon, mga kapatid, na satisfied na sila sa nauupo na lamang? Preaching. Amen. Tayo. Closing prayer. Amen. Uwi. Kaya hindi kayo makausad sapagkat ang gusto yung daanan is the wide gate in Broadway. Listen to me. Again, God wants you to grow and God has His own way for us to grow. And His way is what? Straight gate and what? Narrow way. And it's not the, the wide gate. It's not the broad way. Huh? But a lot of people, sabi nga ng Biblia, many will choose the broad way. Many will choose the easy way. But God wants us to choose the uneasy, uncomfortable, confined, distressful way. But, the Bible did not say, it is impossible. It is possible. I mean, ilan ako ngayon sa mga kristyano, matagal na kayong kristyano, 10 years, 15 years, more than that. Pero, anong, anong contribution, anong bahagi meron tayo sa paglago ng church nito? Our goal, regularly, our goal for the regular first time visitors is 250. Are you a part of it? Are you a part of it? Did you, did you desire to be a part of it? Do you have a desire to be a part of it? Did you, have, did you pray for it? Or, na, na, nakiusap man lamang ba kayo sa Panginoon? Sabi mo, Lord, I want to be a part of it. I want to I wanna bring at least one. Mula doon sa 250 first time visitors, gusto ko makapagdala kahit isa man lamang. Sa kanila na yung 249, sa akin yung one. Nanalangin ba tayo? Nanalangin ka ba tungkol sa bagay na yan? Or, nagkaroon ka man lamang ba ng desire? Okay, pa, pa, <laughs> Brad, hindi, hindi pa ako marunong mag-share, hindi pa ako marunong mag-invite. Pwede bang puntahan natin yung kaibigan ko, yung kapitbahay ko, punta ka sa bahay, puntahan natin. Pero sasabihin mo, ah, hmm, bayaan mo na lang sila dyan, basta pupunta na lang ako, Brad, sa Sunday. Sige, kahit hindi mo ako dalawin, pupunta na lang ako sa'yo Sunday. Hey, that's not the kind of life that God wants you to be. Are you listening to me? God wants you to grow. And for you to grow is to live the Christian life. And to live the Christian life is to go and enter into that what? The straight gate and what? Narrow way. But you hate it. Sabi, ah, eh, nahiya nga ako. Ah, eh, yung nga. Bahala na sila dyan. See? No wonder kung bakit disgraceful ang atin pong uh, Christian life na yun. 
kaya nga nakakatawa, kaya pinagtatawanan tayo, sapagkat yung mga Jehovah's false witnesses, they have the courage to knock on doors, they have the courage to, to sell their trash, to sell their magazines, but Christians, tamad tayo sa paghahayag ng salita ng Diyos. It's time to get up. It's time to lose everything, brethren. It's time to lose the pride to get up from it. I mean, to get up from the pride. At iwan ang natin yung unforgiving spirit. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to the sweet spirit. At sasabihin natin, yes, I know, nagkasala ka. I know, nagkamali din ako. Well, ganyan ang buhay ng tao. Lahat tayo nagkakamali. Sa harapan ng Diyos. Sa harapan ng Diyos sa babon. Doon tayo nagkasala. And God said, He is willing to forgive us if we will confess. How about us? Are we willing? Let's go back to that kind of spirit. I mean, sweet spirit, brethren. Sweet spirit. Let the Holy Spirit uh, drive us. Let the Holy Spirit move us. Let the Holy Spirit speak to us. Let the Holy Spirit control us. And this is the only way, brethren, that you can get out as a prisoner and go to that straight gate a narrow way kapatid just imagine matagal ka ng kristiyano pero pumupunta ka na kung saan saan naghahanap ka ng easy way to grow there's no easy way to grow like what I've said God has His own way ha huh? mahirap man mas maganda pa anong gawin mo bumalik ka na lamang sa pila kahit nagaling ka doon sa third lane na pinag-isa at nag-iisa na lamang yung three lanes, alright, bumalik ka doon sa pila, at least, alam mong nasa tama kang lane. At least, you know that that is exactly where God wants you to go and where God wants you to be. God wants you to be in that narrow way, the straight gate. If you know, once you know, once you've learned the right way, that gate, the, the straight gate, in narrow way, you will know the right way. And if once you know the right, well, right way, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Kahit na nakapila ka, sige lang, maghintay ka lang. At least, tama itong pinipilahan ko. Or, will you be like the Israelites? Hindi nga sila tumigil. Pero nung ginawa nila, umikot-ikot naman sila. Hindi sila tumigil. Ah, napakalawak ng daan nila. Bakit? Disyerto yun eh. Napakalaki ng inikutan nila. Pero ang tanong ko, nakarating ba sila kung hindi sila dumaan sa gustong daan na nila ng Panginoon? Hindi sila makakalabas ng disyerto kung hindi sa kanila, kung hindi sila pinigyan ng Panginoon ng tama daan at hindi sila dumaan sa gustong daan na nila ng Panginoon. How about us tonight? God knows your condition, spiritual condition. I know. Some of you, I mean, listen, I'm not judging. God knows what, I'm, what, I'm, what is my intention tonight. And God knows your heart right now. God knows, God, God can pinpoint, God can point His finger to anybody here who has an unforgiving spirit. Kaya kayong ituro ng Panginoon ngayon. Kaya kayong ituro ng Panginoon kung sino ngayon ang full ng pride na hindi kayo makalapit, hindi kayo makatingin sa, sa mata, mata sa mata sa iba sapagat alam nyo na may problema kayo sa iba. Will you allow that to be your bottleneck? Huh? Na hindi yan ang pumipigil at nagiging dahilan para maging stagnant Christian ka? How about it tonight? Or just confess it? You can come to God and say, Yes, Lord. I know my condition. I know I'm not living right. I know that there's bitterness in my heart. I, there's something wrong in my heart. There's something wrong in my mind. Please forgive me. And I'll get myself right with God tonight. Will you do that tonight? 
Shall we all stand please, Father? Thank you for your words. Now I beg you to please speak to the hearts of your people now. Please. Don't know it's my intention, oh God. Don't know it's my heart. I want to help your people. I want them to enjoy their Christian life, oh God, like what you have said. You, you want us to live the Christian life, oh God. And the only way to 